that even mean, Bowers Game Corner? Hey, YouTube, I'm back again today for another how to play video. And today I'm very excited to teach you how to play the original wizard card game. This is for three to six players, ages 10 plus. First thing you're going to need is a pen or a pencil, and make sure you pick someone to be in track of the score sheet. Put your initials at the top, and we'll talk more about it later. Next, you're going to randomly just take one card from the top of the deck for every single player in the game. And whoever has the high card will be the first dealer. This is a standard 52 card deck with the exception of four wizards and four jesters. Jesters are the worst cards in the game and wizards are the best card in the game. And the first wizard played will always win. So in this situation where we have wizard, four, wizard, since this wizard was played first, they will be the dealer. So they'll shuffle up the cards, and then for the first round, they will deal one card out to each player. Now, each round, you're going to deal out as many cards as that numbered round. So on round two, we will have two cards each. On round six, we'll have six cards each. Now that everyone has their cards, the last thing the dealer is going to do is flip over the top card of the deck, and that is going to be the trump, a.k.a. the wild card, for this particular round. So now what's going to happen is everyone's going to predict the number of tricks that they're going to take this round. A trick means that everyone's going to play one card into the center and the highest number will win. And we'll explain more about which cards win in the center in a minute. It's actually pretty simple. So going clockwise from the dealer, each player is now going to predict the number of tricks that they're going to take. So since this is round one, your answers could be either one or zero. So uh, this player would look down, they would see they have a five of spades. It's a low card and it's not a trump. So they would probably say, you know what? I'm going to bid zero. So we'll pretend that's M right here. And we'll mark right in here that their prediction was zero tricks taken. And don't worry if it looks like there's a lot going on in the score sheet. There's a really useful score sheet quick reference down here on the bottom right, which will help you out a lot. So now that this player has predicted the number of tricks they're going to take, this player would look down at their hand. They'd see a queen of diamonds, which was once again the trump, so they would probably bid one. So the scorekeeper would put one underneath A, and then the dealer themselves would look down and they would see they have the ace of diamonds. And they would say, oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm going to get one. Dealer writes down the one, and now we're ready to play. So starting once again clockwise from the dealer, players are going to take turns playing one card at a time into the center. Once every player at the table has played one card into the center, we will see who won that trick, and whichever player did will claim that trick. So let's show you how that works. So this player right here would be the first one to lead off, and they would play off their five of spades. So right now, they are winning the trick because no one else has played a card. Now, for the first round, this isn't really going to matter because you don't have any choices on what you're going to play. But in future rounds, there are rules to when you can play certain cards. So since a five of spades was played first, that means that every other player who plays after this has to play a spade if they have one, or they could play a wizard or jester because these cards break the rules of the game. But we'll talk a little bit more about how these work in round two. So this player sees they don't have a spade. So they're doing what's called throwing off. However, since they have trump, that means they have now taken the lead this trick, and this five of spades is no longer winning. Now this queen of diamonds is winning, and this player would win the trick as long as this card right here is not a king of diamonds, an ace of diamonds, or a wizard. And as we know, it's an ace of diamonds, and the dealer with the ace of diamonds would now win this trick. They'd place this in front of them to help everyone see how many tricks they have because that is public knowledge. So once everyone's played all their cards, the round is over. So round one's going to be very quick. The scorekeeper is now going to mark on the score pad the actual number of tricks everyone took. So T was correct, and they did get one trick. A was incorrect, and they got zero tricks. And M was correct, and they got zero tricks. And scoring is really simple. You will only, only ever get points if you successfully guess how many tricks you got on that turn. So even if you got all the tricks in a round, if you didn't predict that you were going to get all the tricks in a round, you're going to lose points for that round. So how scoring works is if you successfully predicted the number of tricks you're going to get, you're going to immediately get 20 points. So for the M player, since they predicted they would get zero tricks and they got zero tricks, they will get 20 points for this round. Now moving on over to the T player here, who predicted they would get one trick and they did get one trick. They get the 20 points for being correct, but then you also score an additional 10 bonus points for every trick that you predicted you were going to get. So essentially they get the 20 plus 10 on top, they would get 30 points this round. Now A did not get it correct, so they're not going to get 20 points. And in fact, for every number you are off by, 
you lose 10 points. So if you predicted you were going to get three tricks and you got zero tricks, you would get negative 30 points. Likewise, if you predicted you were going to get three tricks and you got six tricks, you would get negative 30 points. So in this instance, A would get negative 10. And after the first round, our scores are 30, 20 to negative 10. So to start up round two, the player to the left of the dealer is going to be the new dealer. They're going to take all the cards, shuffle them back up, and then they're going to deal as many cards as it is the round. So in this case, they would deal two cards apiece. And once again, they're going to flip over the top card of the deck to decide the trump. Now let's talk about some interesting situations that can happen when they do this. So first, they might flip over a jester when they do this. This means that there is no trump for the round, and the round plays pretty normal. Now, if they happen to flip over a wizard, then that means the dealer is going to get to look at their hand of cards and then decide what the trump is. But other than that, it's going to be a pretty normal round with everyone predicting the number of tricks they're going to get and then playing the round. And when the wizard does pop up, there's a little spot on the score sheet where you can mark what the trump was. But now let's talk about some situations that will arise in the game and talk a little bit more about how the wizards and the gestures work. So the wizards are pretty simple. If you're the first person to play a wizard during a trick, you automatically win that trick, period. Also, you don't have to follow suit with a wizard. For instance, if this was the first card led, this two of clubs, this player would normally have to play their eight of clubs since they have a club. However, wizards and gestures break rule. You can play them wherever you want. So they could play this wizard right here, and they would now be guaranteed to win this trick, no matter what card was played by this player. Now, jesters are the exact opposite. If you play a jester down, that is, for all intents and purposes, you guaranteeing yourself that you are going to lose this trick. Now, the one situation where that can backfire is if you lead off with a jester and then every other player also plays a jester, in which case the first player who played a jester that round actually wins the trick and is super disappointed. <laughs> so, to clarify, when it comes to figuring out who won the trick, First player to play a wizard always wins a trick. If nobody played a wizard, the highest trump card played is always going to win the trick. And if no trump was played and no wizard was played, the highest card of the first suit led is going to win the trick. And that's the core gameplay. You're going to play over a certain number of rounds. Now, how many rounds you're going to play is dictated by the number of players. And luckily, the score sheet will help you out a whole bunch. So, for instance, if you're playing a three-player game, you will play 20 rounds. If you're playing a four-player game, you will play 15 rounds. If you're playing a five-player game, you'll play 12 rounds. And a six-player game will play 10 rounds. But beautiful score sheet helping you out there. Now, the last major rule I need to mention will only happen the very last round of the game. Because on the very last round of the game, no matter what player count you're playing at, you are going to deal out all the cards to all the players. Meaning that there will be no trump for that round. And that's just how the game works. There's no trump for that round. But the player who has the most points at the end of however many rounds you're playing is going to be the winner of the original Wizard card game. If this helped you out, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Also, consider subscribing or supporting the Patreon as I teach new games all the time. But go have some fun, and thanks for your time, YouTube. This video is brought to you by all of my amazing Patreon supporters, and I would love it if you would join their ranks and have your name immortalized in the end of many of my videos for the end of time. But consider for only a dollar a month, and as always, thanks for stopping by.